Yo, we're going to touch on drop shots. Just did a video recently, a fishing report on using big jig worms for weed line fish, all that sort of stuff. Super effective. I got quite a bit of feedback asking about drop shots. It is the time of year where drop shots definitely come into play. I use them for largemouth bass. I use them for walleyes. I use them for panfish. More specifically, we're going to touch on the bass fishing side of things right here. I think it's probably the most foolproof way to get into drop shotting. And I think it has probably the best productivity if you're targeting largemouth and smallmouth bass. Drop shotting by nature is really a finesse approach. You got to wait below your presentation. Weight hits the bottom. Presentation has, has absence of weight. Fishing can up, come up. You can dance that thing right in their face, kind of entice them. And there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm going to kind of go through how I rig this up, why I do what I do, and hopefully give you some ideas on drop shot fishing. So beginners, the weight. This is probably the most common question I get is what weight do you use? Uh, this is a, a setup that a lot of my buddies fish that I am around in the bass world. This seems to be the most versatile setup. This seems to be the one I see the most often. So I feel like this gets us on the right page, right? Cylinder weight. I start with a quarter ounce. I go up and down from there. Quarter ounce seems to be the most versatile, uh, super simple. Now, why do you go increase? Why do you go decrease in weight? Decrease in weight, if I'm in almost no wind, shallower water, I wanna get it down there. I don't need as much weight. I oftentimes err on a heavier drop shot weight. That's just me. I want that feel, I want down there quick. I usually don't go much smaller than this quarter ounce. That's just me. Knock yourself out if you do. I'm generally fishing a quarter ounce or heavier. Now, which type of weight do you use? That's a question I get asked often too. Cylinder weight for me is the most versatile. You might see uh, the ball weight. You might see the, the egg style weight. Now that's gonna work well when we start getting into what's called power shotting. I wanna add a bunch of weight. I have to cast through the wind. I have to fish in deep water. I'm getting down quick. I might be using a wacky rig or a tube on a drop shot. That's where that larger egg sinker style heavier weight comes into play. I want to get down there fast. I want to make contact with the bottom now. I am chasing fish around. Boom, that comes into play. But for me, for versatility, the cylinder weight seems to work well through rock, gravel, grass, sand, uh, you name it. And then from there, I go up and down based off of the conditions. I think we understand the concept of the weight here. I get questions on how long to make this drop time from the presentation to the weight. Now, to me, it really depends on how much action I want this bait to give off. If I'm trying to fish really close to the bottom, I'm just trying to get something down in front of the fish's face, but I don't want to throw a jig, I might drop that down to just six inches. I've seen it many times where I'm way down there in the bottom, that thing's just a few inches out the bottom. Generally speaking, I'm at about a foot, a foot to 18 inches. That seems to be where I do the best. Uh, I can keep that bait right here. I'm usually pitching my drop shot, so I'm pitching it towards the boat. I'm here. This is my strike zone, right? Foot off the bottom, fish are coming straight on, maybe slightly down or even up at an angle, depending on where they're coming off the structure. That's usually where I like to put it. It's about my rule of thumb right there. So that's about the distance I like to have it. In terms of the receiving end, the hook, the plastic, all that sort of stuff, this is where you can go crazy. Now there's a lot of great videos on YouTube on how to tie a drop shot hook, right? So you can just tie straight onto your line direct. Great, no problem. I use spin shot hooks from VMC, whether it's the drop shot hook, the Nico spin shot, uh, they make a worm hook or they did at one point. And this right here, you can see that, that just spins, that just spins right around that swivel. Nice and easy. I'm not getting line twists, super simple. You tie in the top, you tie in the bottom, easy peasy. No, no problem there. And in terms of the plastic receiving end, right here I'm using a night crawler for Mr. Twister, it's about a six inch presentation. I am actually fishing this, yes, in like a weedless fashion where I fish on Tonka, Waconia, Shisayo, I am fishing grass, milfoil edges, coontail, pond weed, whatever it might be, gives me any upper hand I can. You can see that. I'm getting snaked up in the weeds. Now you can nip hook this with a smaller plastic. You can thread this on, no problem, like you would a traditional jig head. There's really no wrong way to do it. I like to just put it on there just like that right there. I don't know if you can see that. It gives me a little upper hand on what's going on. And then from there, I am putting fluorocarbon. I got about five feet of fluorocarbon to a double union knot to my 10 pound braid. So I'm using 10 pound braid, six or eight pound fluorocarbon, favorite drop shot hook, cylinder weight. Again, you got a lot of wind, you're covering deep water, increase the weight, maybe change the style. 
from here you can do so much so much in what is going on here with the hook and the plastic man it's endless you walk down any aisle in the fishing shop and you see all kinds of different types of presentations that work on a drop shot um, from straight worms like this to tubes to twister tails to flukes to minnow baits to flirt flirts there is all kinds of definitions and terms most plastics brands have a good drop shot option and then for my rod I'm actually using a seven foot three medium light. This is a custom Thorn Brothers rod, Predator Blank. I went with a 3000 series sustain. This gives me some castability. Very, very balanced, very, very comfortable. This is my conductor's wand. I want a lightweight setup, very sensitive setup. This is the type of setup I don't skimp on. So my drop shot rod, my feel rod, my hair jig rod, right? All that sort of stuff. I am building with the best components I can. That's just me, I want all the advantages in the world that I can get. Thorn Brothers is where I get these built. Go talk to one of the guys or gals there. And there's a lot of options out there now to make a really, really good high-end drop shot rod from anywhere from 250 to 700 bucks. This is not 700 bucks, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to. So that's the nuts and bolts of drop shot. Like I said, you can definitely drop shot a wacky rig. I drop shot a tube, I drop shot a minnow bait, I drop shot a, fl a flirt, a fluke you name it so that's the idea about a drop shot weight on the bottom presentation up here works wonders i will fish it anywhere from five feet of water to 30 feet of water or deeper if i'm chasing deep water smallmouth and it works exceptionally well and don't be afraid to pitch a drop shot just like you would a jig worm or a ned rig pitch it in the cover feed it some line let it hit the bottom and just shake that rod tip and when they eat it you definitely feel that thump so drop shot is a great way to catch fish if you haven't done it give it a try it's effective, especially here in the Twin Cities metro area. However, if you're anywhere else that has bass, you just probably saw a bunch of guys and gals on St. Clair and the Bassmaster Opens crush fish on drop shots. In, in fact, I think Jay Shakur won it fishing some variation of a drop shot, as did many others that cast checks. So it works exceptionally well. Get out there, have some fun, catch some fish, try drop shots if you haven't already. And it's a great way to catch bass, walleyes, panfish, you name it. The drop shot's very, very versatile.